Hey, if you're a fan of the Inglorious Trek Experts, you don't want to miss Deck 78, our subscriber-only podcast, which deals with pop culture and Trek-adjacent subjects. It's a pretty spectacular podcast with amazing guests and conversation every other week. And the only way to get it is to subscribe today. So go to TrekSpertsPlus.com. That's TrekSpertsPlus.com to subscribe to Deck 78. Fire the rockets. Hey. This is Terry Farrell of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and I'm here to invite you to join me and the Inglorious Trexperts as we go on the ultimate road trek, visiting the most iconic Star Trek locations ever filmed. We'll share fun facts about scenes that were filmed there, their incredible Hollywood histories. We may even fight a Gorn or two along the way. We have many special guests from Star Trek movies and series. You can reserve your copy of this epic new documentary on Blu-ray or DVD, along with a gaggle of intergalactic rewards, such as Ernie, the Pet Vasquez Rock, limited edition collector pins, cool sci-fi swag, autographs, of course, and so much more by going to makethetrek.com and supporting us as we boldly go to the greatest Star Trek locations ever filmed. Go to makethetrek.com and let's see what's out there. Engage. Hey, this is Mark A. Altman, and this is the 430 Movie. Welcome to Anarchy in the UK <laughs> Week. I can't even do the Sex Pistols. I can't do it. I can't do Johnny Rotten. That's a good thing. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Anarchy in the UK Week. Anarchy in the UK Week. It's anarchy. No, not going to work. Anyway, we're here with your usual 430 movie host on Monday. It's Steve Melching. Oi. On Tuesday, it's Rotten Darren Doctorman. <laughs> Hello, governor. On Wednesday, it's the vicious Ashley e. Miller. The only thing we have to fear is Wednesday. <laughs> That's true. And on Thursday, it's me, Mark Altman. And, of course, Friday is our consensus pick, assuming we can come to a consensus. And, of course, you're wondering, what is Anarchy in the UK Week? Well, it's our, um, it's our week of movies that, were, that took place in the UK, the United Kingdom. So lots of great movies filmed there. Lots of great movies took place. We, we are, we're across the pond at last. We've done <laughs> San Francisco. Where um, we were, the city was the subject of many slings and arrows, uh, and to those San Franciscans who objected to our depiction of your wonderful city, uh, so, uh, apologies. Uh, sorry, maybe not we sorry. were a little harsh. <laughs> um, New York was a city that we 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 did uh, New York State of Mind Week. Of course, oh, we did that uh, toddle in town. The, the we did the the. Uh, no. Chicago is the toddle in town. town. <laughs> Windy City Week. Uh, Windy City Week uh, was Chicago. And uh, did we do any other week? San Diego Week? Or, Didn't we or do Oklahoma LA Oklahoma week? City Week? Or I feel like we did LA Week. Oh, yeah, we did LA Week. What was that yeah, called? Yeah, in honor of me leaving LA. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. To an undisclosed location. And that's don't right. forget Tulsa Week. Right. Tulsa. That was a real right. barn burner. Tulsa Day. <laughs> Tulsa Doom. <laughs> Tulsa Doom. Do you yeah, know in Tulsa. what real power is? <laughs> Steel. <laughs> the riddle of steel. Okay. Um, so today we're doing Anarchy in the UK. It's movies in London, England. Um, or, 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 in the, or the, the greater kingdom. The, the greater kingdom. Scotland, Ireland, uh, the, you know, the other cities, Liverpool, um, you know. So uh, oh, my a God. I just thought of a pick. Of are open to us. Oh, my just God. Of I just a pick. I just yeah, don't well, know. Uh, too late. I, we oh already locked God. in our answers. <laughs> I just changed my pick and we haven't even started yet. Ugh. So uh, that is, that's wild. Um, we were very harsh. I, I think I mentioned about San Francisco. L what do you think of uh, the United Kingdom, Steve Belching? I love the United Kingdom. I, uh, I've only visited it three times. Um, um, spent about half that time in London and the other half of the time I traveled around the south of England and went up uh, towards uh, Leeds and Bradford. And, Were you uh, live at Leeds? Yes, Liverpool. Uh, drove around in Wales and visited a bunch of castles. I don't know. I, I've Did always, you say there'd be whales here? There'd be whales <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, I, I, really like, uh, I really like England. Um, 
I, I, I watched a lot of British television uh, in the in the late seventies and early eighties, and uh, and a lot of movies uh, from England. And I think uh, this is a great choice for the four thirty movie because England, the UK, has always had such a robust uh, film industry. Uh, behind the U.S. and and India, uh, it's one of the largest uh, or most productive film industries. And and actually, the I believe the world's oldest motion picture film was filmed in Leeds. Uh, in in the UK, by the um, Lumiere brothers, no, no. By, by by another Frenchman uh, ah, who, was, who was living, Jean Luc Picard. Yes, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that that was the that was the bet as to whether all horse uh, all the horses' feet leave the ground at any one point. Mm. <laughs> I have this, to say, this was a film of a garden party. It's very short; it's only a couple seconds long, but it's uh, it's it's thought of as the the earliest uh, motion picture film. It wasn't done on celluloid film, uh, although the first uh, moving pictures developed on celluloid film were also made in the UK in Hyde Park mm-hmm. in 1889. And the first 35 millimeter projector was built in London. So there's a, there's an, there's quite a, a, a film history. Far uh, away the, from the patents of uh, Thomas Alba. Far Edison. away, far yes. to see. There was a great patent fight Friendly between... Angel, uh, sue me. <laughs> Between uh, this this French fellow whose name I'm blanking on at the moment, but uh, it's the French fellow. Uh, By the way, I, I I I laugh when you say robust. It makes me think of that Veep episode. It warrants <laughs> a very robust response. And she said, "Sue just said robust. I can't say robust now." And they were trying to find a synonym for uh, a synonym for robust. That was so funny. I can. That was the wasn't only that thing a I think flavor of. of ragu sauce. Robust, <laughs> a robust flavor. I uh, know no, the uh, the filmmaker was Louis Le Prince, Louis Le Prince, and uh, huh. he was living in England. And that sounds like a to, fake uh, name. <laughs> quite a patent fight with with Edison. That Edison right. ultimately, I think, prevailed. But um, yeah. but it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I also want to say that this week uh, our our good friend uh, Ashley Edward Miller, a member of this uh, coterie of uh, critics, is. Um, on the best movies never made, talking about his unproduced script for The Fall Guy. So I'll definitely be looking forward to checking that out on our uh, Steve and uh, Josh's wonderful podcast, Best Movies Never Made. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, there's a Fall Guy's opening this week. Well, uh, that, yeah. that means you are the type to kiss and tell. That's true. <laughs> and um, I would say that I've been seen with Farah, but I think I, it would have been like when I was. It like, would have been the poster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was seen with that poster. Um, <laughs> And uh, but when I wind up in the hay, it is in it's fact not, only hay. It is in fact only hay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know who's on the, in that fall guy besides uh, besides Lee Majors, the great? Uh, oh no, was that Matt Houston? Heather Thomas and Pam Pam Hemsley was on. Oh, Pam Hemsley was on Matt Houston, right? Not right. the fall guy. Yeah, Princess Artala, the luminous completely Princess Completely different show altogether. I don't know why I get those, because that was Lee Horsley <laughs> instead of Lee Majors. You're That's just like, Lee. Too, too many Lees to keep track Lee. of. Ugly and ghastly. (laughs) Yeah, I was not a. I never really watched The Fall Guy. Should I see this movie? Uh, You know what? Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with yes. I think um, it's uh, David Leach who's uh, directing it. The trailers look really good. Um, I I may or may not have had occasion to uh, to read the script, Um, and I thought that that was quite good. So um, it's. uh, I, I I have a good feeling about it. You know? Well, I'm a big fan of Atomic Blonde and John Wick, so I'm a big David Leach fan, and I kind of liked uh, Bullet Train as yeah, a diversion. Me too, man. So uh, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to watch it because I like that David Leach. Yeah. I really like Atomic Blonde, which starts in England mm. but doesn't end in England. It's really for <laughs> Berlin. It's it's for the Fatherland <laughs> Week where we talk about <laughs> films set in Germany. So. Um, We'll get film set I don't in Germany. Think we're going to have a fatherland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't think we're going to do fatherland. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah I but I, I just read that Run Lola Run is being re-released for its 25th anniversary this year with a new uh, 4K restoration. I know, and it just got bumped up to 4K. I think on um, on Apple uh, Apple uh, mm-hmm. 
the, the Apple. That's Apple, Apple Plus. TV. The Apple. <laughs> it just bumped up on the Apple. <laughs> yeah, it just got I involved. Just Apple. bumped it up to 4K. <laughs> so, because, you know, you never know. Someday you just it's turn it on now. and suddenly movies in 4K. Like, it just, like, yeah. magically becomes 4K. So, someone so, on our, uh, on our, uh, uh, Discord? Site, our Discord, um, suggested casting for the Muppets, uh, 430 movie. And, uh, oh dear God, no! Oh, oh my mm-hmm. God! I want to hear this. Please and tell. They had uh, <laughs> who, who Steve was, it, was Scooter. Way? Scooter, I totally yeah. see that. That's great. A- Ash Fifteen was, seconds to curtain, Mister Altman. That's right. Ash was <laughs> yeah, Gonzo. <laughs> Ash yeah. was who? Gonzo. Ash was Gonzo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was Rolf. <laughs> oh, I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. And and oh. they had you as Kermit, Mark, and I I said oh. no. I feel like that's Mark miscast. is Fozzie. Yeah, yeah I, so I would agree <laughs> with that. I, 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 I hate to say it, I would agree with that. I'm more Fozzie than I am Kermit. If yeah, anything, Steve is more Kermit. We have no Kermit. <laughs> yeah, Kermit. I think Steve really is more Kermit because Kermit is a totally. great man. You we know, have no long we have, suffering. We have no Piggy. We have no Miss Piggy either. No, <laughs> no, no. We don't. Unless who, who's been who's guested the most often. I kind of see myself more as Statler and Waldorf. No, you're, not. <laughs> you're both Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> Statdorf. Statdorf. <laughs> Isn't that like? Is that like brand? I'm so Jolina? heavy right now. Like both a... of them. Uh, yeah, no, because they can both pronounce Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love this podcast. It's my favorite. It could be better. Oh, you know, it's not. <laughs> Suck, boo. I. Uh, who, can you tell us who said that on the Discord? That was a uh, I don't remember. Go, visit our Discord and, and learn. And find <laughs> out. <laughs> How can they get to the Discord? Beats me. We have a, yeah, no, we'll have a, we have a link in the show notes <laughs> and yeah, uh, link on, in the show on notes. our socials. Because every time we tell people just go, look, look in the Glorious Strikes, they're like, no. So we, you got to use the link. <laughs> But the link, the, link. In the, show notes. the link is in the show The link is the life. Show notes. Yes. And they say, what are the show notes? The show notes are when you log into your favorite podcast provider. There's like a little description of the episode. There's notes on each episode, yeah. It, and, right. it says, um, and it says uh, the link for the Discord channel. Right. And, and there's a lot of people there talking on the, the There Discord. are. we got about 100 or so uh, people. Uh, and we've only uh, been around for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's great. I, mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I visit it uh, every day at least a couple times. Yeah, and and you know when we get to one thousand seven hundred one members, we're gonna have a special treat for that seventeen oh one person. Yeah, ooh, the site explodes. The site explodes, and it's yeah. replaced by a Klingon bird of prey. Join us for the final voyage of the Discord chat server for one <laughs> last adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the Muppets four thirty movie. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's good. All our podcasts. Well, turnabout is fair play, right? Turnabout intruder is fair play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but people really seem to be enjoying this new season of 430 movie. Uh, we've done a bunch of episodes already. I mean, we're, I don't know if we're at the halfway point yet, but we're we're, we're definitely, we've done a lot. I don't want to count. <laughs> yeah, I don't need. Because I'll either get that. excited or depressed, and I don't want to be. The, they were on the, de- like the roller coaster. My yeah, pick exactly. For a disaster <laughs> week. Where Speaking of disaster week, then, roller coaster. <laughs> It's funny. I got I got both um, lauded and uh, criticized for that pick. Well, um, as as with everything, is, well, of course, you cannot right. please anyone any of the time. Any time. Uh, I, I know Dave Roth, uh, who was on the Discord channel. He felt that uh, uh, we 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 should have had Airport. Yeah, and, no, Airport uh, is not a good movie. I, no, I think Airport is just awful. And I said I would have rather seen Zero Hour. Yeah, exactly. I, there's no way. Not even on Wednesday would I pick. Airport because Wednesday is not a shitty day. It's just out of the box, <laughs> and there's nothing out of the box about airport. airport I did, is by the way, box. The airport exactly. Airport is the box. It, there's <laughs> nothing boxier than airport, <laughs> um, except Noah Hathaway. Yeah, he's, he's very boxy. Oh, yes. he's, he's, oh, he's boxy. boxy. Yeah. boxy. Where's boxy? Yeah. Okay, uh, boomer. <laughs> then he grows up into that guy from Adam Twelve. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> Kent McCord, I think, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, thank well. you. Oh my God, I've still got it. Nice. I'm a, I'm a Galactica. You forgot spurt. Marty Milner, though. He was never in Galactica. He was <laughs> never in Galactica. Um, I, I did have a a moment of of inspiration, and I don't remember if this was on the Discord or on uh, Twitter. But somebody pointing out how weird it was that uh, during Disaster Week that uh, that Mark and I essentially we swapped Thursday and we Wednesday. traded places. Yeah, we traded places, and it. 
I had an epiphany. I had an epiphany from that. That sounds that like a fantastic time together. It has, yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, it has informed my choice for this week. And all oh. I'm going to say is, boys, boys, I think I'm ready? back. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I've been doing cocaine and lifting weights all week, and I am ready for this podcast. He's like John Wick. I'd say I'm back. I heard you were back. I'd say I'm back. back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, uh, it's Anarchy in the UK week. These are films. Well, Mark, can I interrupt you for just one second? There's, oh, uh, course, you, there's a, a new movie that came out uh, just a week or two ago that I was wondering if you saw that uh, I saw in the theater called Coup de Chance. I didn't because it wasn't playing at any theaters near me. I was really upset. I looked because, of course, I wanted to see the new Woody Allen movie, right? And it was playing at like a bunch of crappy theaters. I'm like, why is it not playing near me? You know, and 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 so, it, you know, and it was coming to digital like the next week. So I was kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, and it was playing weird show times too. It was like they were not making it easy to see. Uh, but I, I have not seen it, so I would love to know right now, right here and now, what you, Steve Melching, had to think <laughs> of the new Woody Allen, his fiftieth movie, Coup de Chance, filmed entirely in French. Which don't I, wait for the, the translation. Subject, which will be the subject of our next week. Uh, which will be movie is filmed uh, entirely in French. Which will be French Fry Week. No, we'll have French. to stop, workshop that. <laughs> Dressing, French toast. French. I didn't French. see it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, did I did see it. I did see it. No. Uh, <laughs> That's a great what did you think? Uh, it played for a full week at the uh, Lemley Encino Town Center Theater. Yeah, I wasn't going there for Woody Allen. And then it played another week, but only one show a day. That's actually, they remodeled it. It's a, it's a nice little theater, and the popcorn is great. I really like Mark that. Mark isn't theater. going to the valley. But it is in the valley. But it's right down the street from uh, the Buka that we used to go to. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, it's on, I think you can stream it on Amazon now. Uh, you can rent it on Amazon. Um, but uh, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's beautifully filmed. Like Vittorio Storaro. Uh, did the uh, cinematography and it's mm -hmm. gorgeous color photography and it looked great in the big screen and uh, you know it's fine I thought it was uh, kind of a solid mid tier Woody um, right. it was people compared it to yeah. Match Point is it in the Match Point uh, uh, I think Match really. Point is better yeah. I haven't seen Match Point in years but uh, you know this it's, it's, hard it's to kind find. of yeah yeah uh, uh, Coup de Chance is is kind of a slight movie mm. but it's got some it's got a darkness to it that was it surprised me a little bit, but maybe I shouldn't have been surprised by. It. But uh, you know, it's 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 decent. I'd give it a I'd give it a B. Okay, good to know. I will be I will be watching it if it's. I got to check and see if it's on Apple TV if I can buy it, and then I got to check and see when the Blu-ray is coming out because I have every Woody Allen movie on Blu-ray, even the bad ones, <laughs> even the few bad ones. <laughs> So, um, include and speaking of bad day. ones, yeah, okay. Anarchy in the UK, da, 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 da. Anarchy. I, tur I turned the Sex Pistols into a show tune. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Monday, Steve Belching, start us off. What are we watching for now Anarchy then. in the UK week? Now, then, now, then, now, then. Um, yeah, hey. no, uh, you think of uh, when I think of uh, British movies. In my mind, they tend to fall in a handful of categories, and and maybe that's not fair, but I, I they seem to be a lot of period or costume drama uh, films, uh, a lot of uh, romantic comedies, a lot of absurd comedies, uh, uh, dystopian movies because that that sort of bleak British mindset, and uh, crime and gangster movies. Uh, those seem to be the ones that. Um, that popped to mind most readily. And so my pick falls neatly into one of those categories. It's a movie that I saw for the first time in uh, 1999 at the American Cinematheque, the Egyptian theater. They did a retrospective of films from the English director, Mike Hodges. Mike Hodges. So my well, pick... I guess I don't have to pick that one now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it off your hands. Well, I'm okay. speaking, of course, of 1971's Get Carter. One day, a professional killer went home to visit his family and found his brother murdered. Now, who killed him? I don't know nothing. Now listen, the only reason I came back to this crap house was to find out who did it. And I'm not leaving till I do. Michael Caine is Carter. 
A man with unbridled hate. Do you want to be dead, Albert? For Christ's sake! You knew what I'd do, didn't you, Albert? Listen. Christ, I didn't kill him! I know you didn't! When a professional killer hates, he turns animal. And there becomes but one law in the underworld jungle. Get Carter. Get Carter. Before Carter gets you. Don't let us interrupt you. Now. Don't you think you ought to get dressed first? Come on, Jack, put it away. You know you won't use it. <laughs> the gun he needs. <laughs> Out. Carter, the heated killer. The cool lover. Carter, a man of few words. A man of decisive action. I've come for you, Margaret. Take your clothes off. Few words. Decisive action. <laughs> Drives the hunter. No, no! Fear pursues the hunted. They have killed me! They killed my brother! He's dead! Oh. Hey. Carter spreading terror with an uncontrolled trigger. Carter was a killer by profession. Now he is a killer by instinct. Goodbye, Alex! Michael Caine is Carter. Get Carter before Carter gets you. Uh, this is written and directed by Mike Hodges, of, who, of course, directed uh, Flash Gordon and Croupier, uh, based on the novel Jack's Return Home by Ted Lewis. Uh, it was... Uh, uh, photographed by Wolfgang Shashinsky. 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 Gesundheit. Achoo. The uh, father of Peter Shashinsky, who was the Shizitsky. DP on the. Uh, Shashinsky. Shashinsky. Shizizzy, who is the uh, DP on uh, The Empire Strikes Back Correct. Uh, and the Rocky Horror Picture Show and History of Violence. Uh, had a great uh, musical soundtrack that we were not singing along very well to by Roy Budd. Down, uh, down, 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 down. Who also did The Wild Geese and uh, Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger. Uh, it was a great, actually a great score. He composed a few original songs for it and uh, recorded the score music with his jazz trio, Directly to picture, um, which was I thought was kind of interesting. Of course, it stars the great iconic Michael Caine as uh, Jack Carter, uh, Ian Hendry as uh, who, uh, one of the uh, seedy underworld characters uh, who was probably best known for Roman Polanski's Repulsion and also did a lot of television. Who uh, he unfortunately uh, was an alcoholic who, with a heart condition, who died a year or so after the film's release. Uh, also starred Britt Eklund from The Man with the Golden Gun and uh, a bunch of other uh, television, including The Six Million Dollar Man, Wine, Women, Eyes, and War. Five Zero. Oh, was she in that? Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh, yeah, she. he Of she course, was she's one of the clones. She played multiple clones. Multiple clones. Of course. It's a terrible name. Uh, Michael Caine <laughs> almost uh, almost oh, wasn't sure, in the good. movie. Uh, MGM wanted a bigger star um, for the film, someone like Telly Savalas, but uh, Mike Hodges ah. uh, prevailed. Uh, and the, the film kind of, kind of came about uh, when uh, the British uh, film censorship laws were relaxed in, in 1969, and there was also a wave, uh, a lot of interest in the Cray Brothers uh, organized crime trial. And uh, that was so, cray cray, cray cray. <laughs> uh, so so Hodges, uh, was the producer of the film, uh, uh, Michael Klinger brought the book to Mike Hodges, who uh, adapted it, uh, to the film. And did um, he wear dresses too? Not this Klinger, I think that was that was the the other Klinger. Um, yeah, so uh, uh Hodges. Uh, set the film in Newcastle upon Tyne, 
uh, after scouting several locations in England and sort of shaped the screenplay to fit uh, the location, choosing to shoot in a lot of the sort of brutalist architecture and the the bleak gray beaches and the the coal uh, infrastructure that was there. He filmed some of it in a house that was had actually just been vacated by an actual British gangster. And so a lot of the uh, the set decoration was left over from this this gangster. It gave it that extra uh, patina of uh, authenticity. Um, and um, you know that's that's about it. It's a movie that uh, did not cost very much, uh, but was a, a a reasonably good success at least in the UK. And then sort of uh, dropped out of view uh, for a couple of decades until it was rediscovered and uh, now has taken its place as one of the premier British gangster movies. I just think it's I think it's really a great emblematic British film in, in terms of you know showcasing that gray bleak rainy side of of British life and it's it got a really great downbeat storyline as as Michael Caine uh goes who's a gangster goes from London back to his hometown of Newcastle to find out what happened to his brother he suspects his brother was murdered and uncovers a whole seedy operation under there and uh, is encouraged to not get involved because it could bring about a, a gang war between his London gang and the Newcastle gang. And um, it's just a, a, just a really terrific bleak gangster movie. Steve, you know what your eyes look like? Piss holes in the snow. <laughs> you know, that's that's the, 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 the CD soundtrack to that has uh, the, the music cues are inner, inner, <laughs> Are interspersed with quotes uh, from the movie, and, and so good. They're great. Usually, that bugs me, but this is a great score. The quotes are totally all great. great. Uh, the worst one is the um, out of sight Steven Soderbergh's out of sight score, which has some terrific score music, but they put the dialogue over the music. Over the music, yeah, uh, I hate sucks. that too. And it's funny when I bought the score for Get Carter, it came with like um, it was the '90s where everything was remixed, and yeah. it came with the Get Carter the remix of the main theme, like five different remixes. It was <laughs> awesome. I got it at the Virgin <laughs> Mega Store. Oh, Look, yeah. I remember this. I love this movie. I love this movie so much. Um, it's funny because it was not my pick. I, I had my pick dialed in, and then somehow when we were talking at the very top of the show about ten minutes ago, I'm like, oh, I, before you even said, it, I said I forgot Get Carter. I'm going to pick Get Carter. I got to pick Get Carter. I love Get Carter. And then you picked it. So I'm going to go back to my original pick later. But Oh, good. I remember we had a good friend, we still do, Alan Spencer, who loved yeah. this movie. And yeah, loved I think I'd never heard of it. I think he and, was the one that said, we got to go see this movie. Uh, I was not familiar with it. I'm ashamed to admit I was not familiar with it. We went to the Cinematheque. I remember you and I went to Cinematheque. Yeah. We saw it there um, and just blown away by how good it was. Just love it. Yeah. You know, it's 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 great UK gangster movie. It's noir. It's Michael Caine. It, 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 everything about it is just great. And and uh, Warner Brothers I, did a nice. I think I went Ray, to that screening too. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry Pretty if I don't sure. remember 1999. Right. Look, I do remember when the moon got blue. And I don't blown remember you. Either, so it's fine. I don't remember you either. Um, so, <laughs> but um, but. Um, the thing that was, uh, there's a f gorgeous 4K from the BFI, the British mm -hmm. Film Institute, that came out last year, that if you have a 4K player um, and a region-free Blu-ray player, that's the version to get. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. um, and it has great special features, a great booklet, awesome packaging. So I, I highly recommend it. And yeah, yeah, as I recall, it. Mike Hodges was there. He did a QA. and a He was, he was he there the, that whole week for presenting his there. films. Even yeah. Darren, apparently. <laughs> Even me. Uh, I'm not sure, but I believe that all 4K discs are region-free. No, it, it, the 4K is. But there's a Blu-ray with the bonus features. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, that's locked for um, right. region for 2 or whatever regions. England yeah. is. So if you want to watch the special features, um, you need a region free. But yeah, 4K is, is region free. So yeah. uh, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous set. Now, Warner Brothers does still have their Blu-ray in print, which is fine. It's But um, I highly recommend this BFI edition. And I highly suggest you avoid the Sylvester Stallone remake. Ugh. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I remember I was so excited. I went to see that in the theater. Yeah. Oh. Rushing. Don't remind me. 
And that was remember Ely Samaha. He 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 did yep. franchise films. Every all these awful movies and uh, e Eck versus Se Sever and all this. <laughs> no. <stuff. laughs> but yeah, Carter Eck was one of those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He because he made all his money in like uh with clubs and they put it into movies and he had a distribution deal through Warner Brothers, but it looked like he made these movies for three cents. You know, um the only thing he had that was a big hit was that whole nine yards, which is also a terrible movie. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh I, I think our may rest in peace, Alan Alan Kaufman, who is one of our producers on Free Enterprise, was a producer on that. Wow. And so uh but um Anyway, there you why, go. Why am I even talking about this? This has nothing to do with the show. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Monday. Uh, Monday. Was Monday, great pick, great, Steve. What a way pick. to start us off. Let's see if Darren can can keep uh, keep it up. Uh, Darren, <laughs> Tuesday. I think I think you better rephrase that. <laughs> let's see. Let's he can see keep it up Darren. for four hours, but then he has to call his doctor. Can, can right. continue oh. the fantastic. I have a Tuesday for all of us. Ooh, Damn right, you do. And it is fun, especially if you are a fan of the uh, late 60s, early 70s uh, troupe Monty Python, mm. the Flying Circus. Of course, Probably. their first film, well, their actually first film where everyone appears in it, uh, is set entirely in England. And it is called Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Once in a lifetime, there comes a motion picture which changes the whole history of motion pictures. A picture so stunning in its effect, so vast in its impact, that it profoundly affects the lives of all who see it. One such film is... Very good, thank you. Yes, thank you. Next, please. Once in a lifetime, there comes a motion picture which changes the whole history of motion pictures. Uh, yes, thank you. Next. Once in a lifetime! Go away. What? Next. What's wrong with my voice? My voice is all right. My brain is wrong. That's more like it. Kurosawa's Seven Samurai is such a kind of movie. And Ivan the Terrible. The rest are just regular movies. Like Herbie Rides Again, La Notte, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you If you do not open this door, we shall take this castle by force. When <laughs> All this will be yours. What, oh, the curtains? Run away! Run away! Run away! What makes you think she is a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt! But her the seven seal, let's be sure. So Monty Python and the Holy Grail. 看完了,来这里吃便饭。It is an absolutely brilliant piece of work. And I say that as a, uh, uh, a fan of the Pythons for many years and a fan of the Arthur legend. And uh, it is so 
well done in its goofiness that at certain times you don't know which kind of movie you're watching. Are you watching a historic uh, uh, recreation or are you watching a farce, a uh, a comedy where everything is batty and, uh, uh, you know, which is, right which is way the same as ducks. And uh, it is it is absolutely amazingly written, amazingly acted. And it is so funny and so quotable uh, after many years. Uh, it is uh, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it takes a uh, it takes a, a rather uh, conspicuous uh, left turn in the final act. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I'm not going to spoil for anybody. Uh, but, uh, it is so much fun to watch. It, uh, it is a parody of this kind of movie. It is a parody of, you know, big, uh, elaborate, uh, historical, uh, films. And it is a parody of, uh, the people who make them. Uh, I absolutely love it. And, uh, I, I challenge you not to think of quotes, uh, from this film if you've seen it more than once, uh, because it's just, it is amazing. That is such a great pick. I have to tell you that the humor definitely holds up. First of all, it holds up over multiple viewings as all Mighty Puffin movies do. Um, but it just holds up, period. I, uh, I watched this with Caden. Mm. And he laughed his ass off. Yep. <laughs> uh, particularly, like, one of my very favorite things in this film, and again, I won't spoil it as you didn't, but I love how it ends. And I and I love the way... It's almost impossible to describe it without giving it away. The only thing that I will tell you, everyone out there in, in viewer land, is if you go to watch this film, do not watch it on any streaming service uh, that will immediately take you into the next film oh, right. or into some trailer or anything like that. Right. You cannot watch it that way. You've got to watch it on disc or you've got to watch it like, you know, uh, through like just rent it or do whatever the hell it is. Um, you have to but, watch it all the way until the movie stops. Yes, 100%. Or you do not get the full delightful experience of this film. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, I think I discovered it when I was 12 years old, which is kind of the perfect age. And um, it just in- became an instant favorite. And I, I, I think we talked about this before on the show, but it was the first screenplay I ever read because they hmm. published that. Um, and I have it on that my book. shelf right now, This the book that has the entire screenplay in it, plus all of Terry Gilliam's drawings. It has a different and- cover on it that is crossed off with uh, grease uh, pencil. Yes, and, uh, written in uh, over it, and it's it, it, you know I just remember just reading that book cover to cover and just being fascinated by it, and I have lost track of how many times I've seen that movie. It is a a perfect pick for uh, for this week. It, it really symbol in the way Get Carter kind of symbolizes the British gangster movie. Monty Python perfectly encapsulates that absurd British humor. And the, they released an album, uh, I think a f- couple years after the movie came out. Uh, it's officially called the album of the soundtrack of the trailer, the trailer. of the film <laughs> of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, and it is, it, it features, uh, tons of, uh, of, uh, audio from the film and, but other, but other skits as well. And, uh, the great thing about that is when the uh, end of the movie comes up and you hear all this uh, loud uh, noises and such of things going on on screen, uh, the uh, someone comes on and says, well, um, uh, the film ends mainly visually. <laughs> and, then, and then that's the end. <laughs> I remember finding, coming across that LP in a record store one day and freaking yeah. out and buying it immediately. Yep, it's great. Well, someone on our Discord channel recently says, so has Altman ever seen, has he finally seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Because you picked it before, and I said I had never seen it. No, I think, I still he, talked about, I think he talked about uh, The Life of Brian. Oh, yeah, I, I, I haven't yeah. seen that. I, nor have I seen the Holy Grail. Wow. 
But mm. I really should see it because it is a gaping yes. hole in my cinematic yeah. uh, 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 thing, and it just sounds so delightful from your it description. Is. It is. So uh, I will. I, I will need to re remedy that at some point <laughs> soon. Watch it with Isaac so you can understand it better. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. watched Spinal Tap this weekend, which he loved. Nice. Oh, nice. Good call, Dad. Spinal Tarp. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god he was on the floor during stonehenge it was exactly oh my god yeah no 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 so good that that never gets our just Addie's like, weekend that's right I'm letting my hair down i see you boys <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah better not stand too close to you they'll oh. think i'm part of the band i, I i'm joking of course. <laughs> i'm joking of course <laughs> oh, that movie is so funny okay well i guess that brings us to wednesday and we've been told uh we've been told, we've been told, to told that he's back We'll see. Yeah, we're going to find that out. Wacky so, Wednesday is back. My soul searching continues, but uh, but this time, guys, I'm not coming in here doubting myself. I'm coming in here feeling pretty good about myself. Um, like I said, I, I read that tweet about Mark and I switching places uh, last week, and I just I felt like I finally understood what the problem was and, and what was going on. Um, I was just... I was not going far enough. I wasn't challenging myself anymore. I'd fall into a groove, and uh, and not a good groove, right? Like not like um, getting down. Stella getting did not get her groove back. It, it, no, and neither did the emperor. Like n nobody was getting their their groove back. I feel whatsoever. your lack of groove disturbing. disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, to the point where just to to illustrate, you know, I, I actually briefly considered. You know, what would be a good Wednesday pick. Mary Monty Poppins. Python and the Holy Grail. And then I thought, no, no, that's not. Because no, that is inside stupid. the goddamn box. That yeah. is just inside the box. It is what, it's what Darren would think of. And in fact, I think Darren's going to think it's of it. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow's head. It's right in that box. It's right in there. <laughs> it, but it's funny that you mentioned Gwyneth Paltrow's head. It's funny that you mention a dead wife. You know, there was a couple of things that I really thought about and it hard. We can talk about them on Friday. There was one that was so close, Is man. Is Jen okay? So close. I just want to know. She's okay, right? You want to put her on the on the phone? Gwyneth Paltrow? No, yeah, your, wife. your wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's fine. No, her head's not in a box. I just, I no, you don't want to talk to her. You don't want to talk no, to her. Never, never mind that. No, no, no. Um, so my pick for Wednesday is a story of um it's a story of revenge um it's about a uh, a man a doctor whose wife uh, is in a horrible accident um and the uh, the doctors who operate on her they work on her for for 6 minutes and they just they can't save her they can't save her life and um uh, the doctor seeks his revenge in 1971's american international pictures the abominable Dr. Fives. What lovely music for a murder, or two, or three, or nine. Who's this? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a dear friend. Nine killed you. Nine shall die. Your wife, no fives. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. Here, how are we going to get him off this? You take his head and I'll take his feet. Let's unscrew him. Dr. Vibes, who samples the finer things of life in his own inimitable way and experiments with fascinating instruments of death. The what, sir? The guitar. The ten curses visited upon the pharaohs before Exodus. Nine shall die. Nine eternities in doom. The curse of boils, of bats. Frogs? Of frogs, yes. 
And the curse of blood. The curse of hail in the bloody middle of nowhere. Probably the most terrifying motion picture you'll ever see. Oh, that's a good pick. Whoa, actually, fat baby. Are you uh, ready for Dr. Fibes? Yeah, Dr. Fibes? <laughs> it's, it's like Saw, but if Saw were campy. Okay, and basically, I think Saw basically is the abominable Dr. Fibes. Um, the, the basic premise of this film that I kind of laid out is that he then goes on this revenge spree, but what makes it cool is he unleashes the ten plagues of the Old Testament upon his enemies one at a time. Okay, now— Which is appropriate because today is Passover. And that makes this an even more perfect pick. That's, that's seriously out of the box. Now, apparently some of the plagues are not exactly Bible accurate— but that's okay, um, because the movie is awesome and unhinged and insane. Uh, bad things happen to Dr. Fibes. Like, his whole body is basically destroyed. He reconstructs his face. He gives himself a new voice. He sounds weird. He looks weird. It's very unsettling. And when I saw it for the first time, I was but a lad, and it scared the unholy shit out of me, and the camp went over my head, okay? And I want you to remember— when I've talked about Batman 66, I've always mentioned that when I was a little kid, I didn't get the camp, right? I didn't get the humor. I thought that it was deadly serious. So when I was a little kid, when I was like 10 years old, 11 years old, and I watched the abominable Dr. Fives with my big brother, I thought that this movie was just deadly serious. And it freaked me out, man. And the freakiest part, okay, is is the climax and the ending. The, um, the climax of this film, I mean, it's, it's an exquisitely designed third act where Dr. Fibes has taken the child of one of the doctors uh, who failed to save his wife. He has opened this kid up and he has put a key into this kid's heart. And he tells the doctor, you have to get inside you have to operate on your child, extract the key, undo his shackles, like remove his restraints before this vat of acid falls and kills him. It is amazing. <laughs> it is just, it's fantastic. And then and he the, the, he, doesn't he give him the same amount of time to yeah, the do exact that surgery? Same amount yeah. of time. He gives him <laughs> six minutes to uh, perform the surgery. It's fantastic. He has like a hot assistant. I think Carolyn Monroe, uh, plays his dead wife. But you didn't like, even mention who plays Dr. Fibes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. How did I not? I think because we were doing the Vincent Price imitation. It's Vincent Price! Who's not British? But it's Vincent Price! It's Vincent Price doing a Vincent Price impersonation. That's right. He does an amazing Vincent Price impersonation. It's crazy. <laughs> um, the denouement and, and on this movie Joseph is Joseph fucking Cotton is in it, Joseph too. Joseph Cotton plays... Um, Star White the, Comanche? The inspector, <laughs> or is he the other doctor? He's the uh, doctor. He's the other doctor who has to perform the surgery in six minutes. Um, it was followed by Dr. Fives Rises Again, uh, right. a sequel. There was going to be a third sequel, The Bride of Dr. Fives, but uh, but that never came together, which is fine because we've got two Dr. Fives movies. Um, it's, it is unhinged. Um, it is so creative. It is so fantastically weird and gothic and over the top and nuts, and I, I can't possibly recommend it highly enough. It's good to be back, boys. He's back, baby. <laughs> He's back. Never better. Ashley's uh, back in the game. It's just funny. I, I just saw this movie in its entirety for the first time this last October around Halloween time. I, I'd never seen it and I made a point of, I'm trying to watch you know, I always try to watch movies I've never seen before or mix it up and uh, it was the Halloween season. I, I've never seen the abominable Dr. Fives. I have to change that. And it was 
awesome. I've seen the abdominal uh, Dr. Fibes. That was slightly <laughs> different. Yeah, that's it. The Vincent Price workout where you get yeah, like he's the, just eating the everything with Vincent, yeah. Fi- <laughs> yeah. Vincent Price. Yeah. Come, <laughs> come and get fit with Dr. Fibes. <laughs> I, I like Vincent Fibes. Vincent yes. Fibes. The good one. Well, <laughs> Ashley, you've done it again. By God, he's back. Welcome home. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Exactly. Is he still the same Muppet, or are we going to revisit that? <laughs> no, he's still the same Muppet. We'll have to. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, okay. Well, that brings us to Thursday, and uh, I'm wondering if to... we'll be able to make it out of the 1970s. It's well, 1970s you know, in the UK. Yes, right? <laughs> yes, indeed, we are. Because now that you took Get Carter from me, uh, I can go back to my original. My original choice is, <clears throat> so I have two choices, uh, and I'm trying to decide which one to go with. Uh, the first is a wonderful film from Arthur Hiller called The Americanization of Emily, mm-hmm. in which uh, uh, James Garner, uh, his superior officer played by Melvin Douglas, wants to be the first dead sailor on Omaha Beach. It's written by the great Patty Chayefsky. It's as it's, 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 it's potent a satire of war as um, um, something like M.A.S.H., uh, which would come later. Um, it was from Robert Altman. But I love the Americanization of Emily. It was re-released as Emily after Julie, uh, Ju- uh, Judy. Judy, 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 after Judy. Julie Andrews had her amazing ses- success in Mary Poppins. Uh, they amazing sex Emily Poppins. Um, uh, because it actually is based on a book, The Americanization of Emily, but uh, it's not a very faithful adaptation. Um, and... Uh, it's interesting. It's kind of a look at, uh, you don't often see the Normandy landing at D-Day. Everybody is noble and everybody, this guy is, is just a coward and he doesn't want to go. And, you know, the whole reason he has a job working for, um, is he's, he's kind of like the character he plays in The Great Escape, where he just finds whatever they need in England, um, uh, you know, and he figures that'll keep him, you know, landlocked. Right. Uh, and, and James Coburn is in it, who's fantastic. And it's, it's, it's a great movie and probably not on the tip of everyone's tongue, but I wanted something that was super British. Uh, and what is more British? You say, oh, Alfred Hitchcock. What is more British than the only gentleman secret agent with the license to kill and thrill? James Bond. Now, the question is, if you're going to go with the James Bond movie, which James Bond movie do you go with? Now, for me, I wanted to go with a, the one of the few Bond movies that mostly takes place in the UK. Because, you know, as great as From Russia With Love is, it's about Istanbul. Spy I Love Me is about Cairo. Where's for Cairo? It was, it was, it was Constantinople. And, and it was Constantinople. And uh, so many of these movies take place, you know, they start in England or the UK, but then they end up globetrotting. One movie that, although it did a little bit of globetrotting, but is really centered for the most part in the UK is Daniel Craig in Skyfall. It's gone. You both know what's at stake here. There isn't much road left. Take the bloody shot. you say about a man like that? Three months ago, you lost the drive containing the identity of every agent embedded in terrorist organizations across the globe. 007 reporting for duty. Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. I only have one question. Why not stay dead? There's no shame in saying you've lost a step. See it. Welcome to the new MI6. I'm your quartermaster. You must be joking. Also PPKS 9mm short. It's been coded to your palm print, so only you can fire it. Less of a random killing machine, more of a personal statement. Q. 007. I want to meet your employer. How much do you know about fear? All there is. Or not like this. Not like him. Just look at you. 
chasing spies. England, and my sex. She send you after me, know when you're not ready, know when you will likely die. Mommy was very bad. The two survivors, this is what she made us. Everybody needs a hobby. So what's yours? Resurrection. And, uh, of course, it has that great song from uh, Skyfall, it, it, which harkens oh back to, yeah, I know, uh-huh. which harkens back to the classic Shirley Bassey classics, brilliantly uh, Oscar-winning Skyfall score, uh, brilliantly directed by Sam Mendes. I know it's very, um, it's very polarizing among Bond fans. Some people don't like the Home Alone third act. I'm kind of like on the on that. I agree. It's but not it, good, Mark. It came up for the anniversary of, the, of, and there's so much in it that's wonderful. It has a great villain played by Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and um, and it has some really virtuoso sequences. I love the chase, the beginning. It's beautifully shot by Roger Deakins. Uh, one of the most iconic or beautiful sequences in a Bond movie is that great fight yep. in the. Uh, tower, the skyscraper in um, where were they? I don't remember. Is it Hong somewhere Kong? in in Asia? Shanghai. Oh, it's in yeah. Shanghai. Okay. I think yeah. it was that Shanghai. was completely reshot. But it's so, gorgeous. But, but it's gorgeous. So what? Lots it's of things got, get reshot. Yeah, it's, it's not like it was released and re, it was yeah reshot. It's, it's, it's amazing. You're it's watching stunning. the sky fall. <laughs> now do it like Shatner. No. Damn it. <laughs> okay. But so so my pick for. Uh, Anarchy in the UK week is James Bond as Ian, as Ian Fleming's James Bond in Skyfall. I love that pick. As opposed to Mel Cooley's James Bond. <laughs> well, I, I could have gone with Casino Royale 1967. That's true. Ooh. Thank goodness which you did. Very British, which is very it sure British. sure is. But I chose not to. Yeah. I mean, how about Peter Sellers and all these great, you know, but it's just a terrible yeah. movie. It's awful. Yeah, like Skyfall. You know what? That's you know so what I wrong. thought. No, Skyfall is great. I I yeah. love that you picked that. Um, and uh, I'm on the other side of the uh of the the third act of that film. I like the fact that it was that it it went in a different direction than you expected it to go. But I thought the action in that movie was amazing. Um, and I don't think that Daniel Craig, other than I mean, look, Daniel Craig, no matter what he was given, was always great. But uh, but I think that he just he kind of found something different for Bond. Uh, in that movie that he had played in uh, a Casino Royale or uh, or Quantum of Solace, he he actually he aged himself up. I mean, he obviously got older, but he let Bond become kind of a a, a different dude. Yeah, look, I love Casino Royale. That's my favorite Daniel yes. Bond. But um, but to me, Skyfall is the uh, Bondiest of uh, of the Craig movies. Um, you know, it falls in that spy who loved me. Goldfinger kind of, you know, it has the kitchen sink. It has yep. uh, the DB5 and it has a lot of cool uh, memorable sequences. It has that great scene with Beatrice Marlowe on the island mm-hmm. uh, where he, you think that he, you know, he's totally, you know, lost a step after he went into retirement and is just a, a shadow of his self and can't hack it. And then, you know, he just sort of unleashes, you know, on, uh, you know, obviously there are a lot of coincidences. There's a lot of happenstance it, you know it's not a flawless movie but i uh you know i i just love it and you know everything that sam mendez does right in that movie he does wrong inspector <laughs> yeah. so um but it, it's it, i think i think it's terrific but definitely among it is it is polarizing but it, it was a super huge uh success at the box office it was a massive success which they chased for the next couple of films I think it was, it was one of their, their biggest successes of all. I think it, it was gigantic. Yeah, I think it was the first yeah. Bond movie to hit a billion dollars at the yeah. box office. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, to me, it's, it's like, 
it's 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 bond and beyond it's 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 uh, so it, it's it's terrific so that's why i had to go with that over americanization of emily which is a much smaller kind of charming movie but skyfall to me is all of the uk in one package well you, you can't really you know be hard to do a uk week without you know giving uh you know, props to Monty Python and James Bond, like two of the biggest UK exports sure. in the entertainment world. And yeah, Guy Falls, not my favorite Bond film, not my favorite Craig Bond film, but a, I like it and it is gorgeous and it's got some great set pieces. Uh, any, you wrote the book on Bond. Any truth to that old story that uh, they were Connery. pursuing Sean Connery for the uh, Albert Finney part? I mean... I don't know if pursue is the right. I think they may have explored whether he was interested and he, he clearly wasn't, you know, um, look at that point, he was so bitter. And I don't know if at that point the dementia, you know, because he was dealing with that mm. at the end of his life. Uh, but he was, you know, he hated, you know, that whole family. Yeah. Um, mm. And was still bitter about it. I can't see him ever doing it. Yeah. Um, but it would have been, you know, it's one of those great what ifs like, what if Joan Collins had been in Generations instead of this nonsense with Antonia? You know, what if Sean Connery had been at the end of Skyfall instead of Albert Finney? You know, and I, I mean, think it's like there great would have been Albert a, Finney, but as a caretaker. I think like, they would have been a bigger backlash against the film if they had gotten Sean Connery. But there wasn't, you know, it's like now some Bond fans, but there wasn't a backlash. The, the reviews were great. You know, it, the backlash is a minority, you know, of... People, I don't think there's a huge backlash against Skyfall. I yeah. think, you know, people. Oh no, I'm Skyfall. saying that there would have been. No, if, I think if people Connery would have been was thrilled in if, Connery if Connery had been No, if Connery had been in it. No, it would. The have 50th been. anniversary of the franchise. Okay. It's like I think it would have been. I think it would have been they, exciting for people. They're going to blow me up along with the DB. They're going to blow me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm you know sorry, that's what? that's funny. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have minded that. I thought it would have been cool, but I was having a conversation on X or Twitter today. Okay. And um, the idea that so many modern audience members take films so literally and are get so bound up in canon and needing every goddamn thing explained and, and justified and rationalized and every I dotted and every T crossed and, you know, mm. or else there's a plot hole and, it, it just that stuff just drives me crazy. It, it used to be when there was a series of films like this, especially the Bond films, there was really the continuity was just really loose, and characters just got recast. You know, Bond got they recast. Never, I mean, Felix Leiter gets Felix recast. Lighter, yeah, M they gets never recast, cared you know. about. Is he black? Is he white? All. I don't know. Is his wife amazing? Dead? And you just <laughs> went, you know you just went with it because it, it's James Bond. Cool, you know. And it, they there went were from little references totally to continuity. It was cool. Lucy Goosey continuity where he could see Donald Pleasance in mm. You Only Live Twice and in Our Majesty's Secret Service, Blofeld doesn't recognize James Bond, right. to a ridiculous continuity starting with Casino Royale where they really, you know, every movie was strict continuity and um, it, 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 it was bad. It was not good. It did not feel right for that franchise. And the idea that Skyfall, well, no, it was Spectre that introduces this concept that Ernst Stavros Blofeld is his stepbrother. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> oh, man. Their attempt to create like a Bond cinematic universe was so, um, was such a misstep. Yeah, but, I, you know, Blofeld, I think that's a good what, idea. Stepbrother Blofeld, what, bad idea. Modern audience seem to expect that now. And, and I, I feel like that kind of got that way from the MCU in large part, yes. because that was such an audacious experiment. It was so successful in building that series of films from Iron Man to Avengers Endgame. And it just, it, it worked for the most part really well. Mm. Uh, and as after Avengers Endgame, it's kind of lost its way a little bit, I think, but like a lot, yeah. but yes. yeah, but anyway, you know, Star Wars, you know, is trying to keep its continuity with, uh, you know, the sequel films and then all the television that's coming out and Star Trek, of course, the, the granddaddy of them all, like, how do you support, you know, I, I saw a chart about this, like over 800 hours of, you know, uh, it, of Star Trek. It's this thing that happens with, I think, any any franchise, and we're like way off topic, but yeah. um, when I was working on uh, on Sarah Connor, 
there was a, a, a phrase, and I might have originated it because it sounds like something I would say, but uh, that shows, I mean, you use, you'd use something like Heroes or Lost as an example, where the continuity becomes so overwhelmingly important that the show becomes about itself, and this is the phrase, it jumps up its own asshole. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with continuity, man. There is nothing wrong with the idea that all of the Craig films are are linked and that they're internally consistent. But I think what ends up happening by the time you're in Spectre, you are suddenly making a Bond movie about Bond rather than a Bond movie. Yeah, that's a great point. It's a so. Bond movie about Bond, and Bond is more of, should be more of a cipher, and it should be about the Bond adventure, and yeah. not about Bond exploring Bond as a character. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's, like it's always interesting point. when you do explore him a little bit, and you get you get color, and you get touches of that, and you get a, a feeling of an interior life, and I think that's great. But when it relies on the on plot elements and a relationship to a plot element, it suddenly just collapses in on itself, yeah. and it feels tiny and silly. I thought it was obvious from naming the uh, character Ernst Stepbro Blofeld. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, listen, we, 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 we still have one more day to program. Oh, yeah. I have to tell you, I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised because I thought I had you guys figured out. I was sure for Ashley it was going to be either American Werewolf in London or mm-hmm. Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. I was sure of it. Darren, I thought about I Hellraiser. Was, Darren, I thought it was going to be Paddington 2. <laughs> How and, dare and you! I, I, I thought Steve was going to be either Croupier or the Craze. So uh, Croupier I, was on my short list. Another Mike Hodges film and a terrific one. I, I was totally wrong. I, I'll tell I you what wrong. else was on my list. It was it was nearly a thing until suddenly Abominable Doctor Fives smacked me across the face. Uh, was uh, and actually it really could have been one of three films, but I was going to settle on um, The Omen Three: Final Conflict. Oh, mm. Sam Neill. Yeah. But uh, any of the, the the Omen movies would count. I haven't seen the new one. I hear it's really good, though, Omen. Yeah, yeah I, I heard it's great. Right. I, I haven't been able to see it yet, but I definitely want to. Now, I uh, think I, I think Friday ought to end with a really big movie. And really along those movie. lines, I would like to suggest uh, the uh, amazing sort of historical uh, uh Spectacular of Braveheart. Because mm. it has everything. If you like uh, Patrick McGowan as the evil king, you got him. Uh, if you have dis- if you want disembowelment, uh, you got it. If you want uh, people uh, lifting up their kilts and showing their arse, you got it. <laughs> Uh, and if you want horses impaled on sticks, you got that too. Well, that's definitely not in Paddington too, isn't it? It is in the cut that I saw. <laughs> well, that's that's a really interesting pick, uh, Braveheart. Obviously, yeah, it was on my, my list too. Uh, a, 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 a an epic, not terribly historically accurate, but yeah, but who cares? Very entertaining, uh, epic. Uh, Film about uh, ostensibly about British history. I, well, I thought you were going to say Harry Potter. Well, how dare you? <laughs> now, that would have been, that was on mister. my list for Wednesday, oh. maybe, but it's because it's not the first thing that you you think about. But, but I'll you tell you, bake off to run that show because I, ugh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not. Uh, no, I would. I wouldn't. I I I wouldn't bake so much as a cookie for I, that. Just sounds like a thankless fucking job. Right? Um, totally thankless. Just that sounds like a nightmare. Although I'll take the money. Um, I thought about Michael Caine, and I I nearly picked, but it was just not out of the box. But only in the sense that almost Alfie. nobody has seen it, but it's glorious. Alfie's great. Yeah. Um, I was gonna pick uh, Harry Brown. Oh, oh Harry yeah. Brown is good, but yeah. Kit Carter's better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's like oh, now as Michael Caine kills people week, which is not well, bad. Al- you know, Alfie was on my short list too. Another terrific Michael Caine movie. If we're going to go in the way back machine, let me suggest a movie that has been on the show before and will be again. John Borman's Excalibur. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, nothing more British one than king. that. A land of the king or one? I mean, it's another iconic Lights, piece of British. The, 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 you know, I, I Excalibur. 
Um, I'll also, tell you, you know, three three movies that were on my short list. Uh, it was very close, uh, very close to picking the Long Good Friday mm. uh, with Bob Hoskins, another terrific crime movie yeah. um, that I just watched. I also considered A Clockwork Orange, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, of course, Stanley Kubrick's uh, look at dystopia. Uh, England and a movie that I revisited last night for the first time in probably 35 years with Nail and I. I knew <laughs> you were going to say that. I knew it. How'd you like it? It held up pretty well. It's 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 good. I, I ultimately didn't pick it because it didn't um, it didn't blow me away, but it's it's good. What about uh, Full Metal Jacket? It took place in Vietnam, but it was filmed in England. <laughs> <laughs> well, by that logic, then suddenly anything in Pinewood Studios, <laughs> Star Wars, <laughs> right? Star Wars. <laughs> now that is out of the box, right? Now, of course, we should definitely consider some of the great World War II movies, including more recently, The Darkest Hour and The King's Speech. Mm. And Inglorious Bastards, terrific. Mm-hmm. Eh. I feel like well, I just saw something. Oh, oh, and there's an, another one. Uh, was it jo- uh, Hope and Glory? Right, oh, John oh, Borman. Another John Borman. I like Hope and Glory, right? like Hope and Glory about the Blitz. Hitler, yeah. <laughs> which is, I guess, is what they're shouting at Columbia. Also, <laughs> oh, I have to mention right. my alternate for uh, Tuesday, which was a fish called Wanda. Yes. Oh, I love that, dude. That was That's on my such a great list. idea, and it um, is absolutely one of the most English movies ever made. I think it, I picked it, it a couple of years ago for something. Probably, I know. Where I went on a rant about how. Look. The kids aren't going to like it because it makes fun of a person with a speech impediment. It's Ken. He's going to kill me. Uh, uh, it's, it's such a great movie. It's so funny. And speaking of uh, Monty Python alums not making a Monty Python movie. Yeah. The t- Time Bandits. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't exactly. really take place in England. Well, if you imagine that like it's that little boy's story, which it, which yeah. it is. He lives in London in a shitty apartment. It begins there. It ends there, right? Don't touch it. It's well, then you also no. have to. You also have to consider Brazil. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's a state of mind. And, uh, <laughs> and well, in other World War Two movies, uh, uh, Dunkirk, which I, I mm-hmm. uh, right, you know, I think is one of Chris Nolan's best movies. Yep. Um, I, I don't know. I, I try to imagine. I, I don't know. I'm trying to limit my picks to movies that actually largely take place on there. the island. Yeah. yeah. So the there are all those early Hitchcocks, 39 Steps, yeah. um, uh, Saboteur. Sa- Sa- Saboteur is Globetrotz. Oh, you're right. You're no, right. He presents it to Statue of Liberty, which is definitely not England. No. No. I mean, not there's that, that whole string of uh, romantic comedies like Notting Hill, the Richard and Curtis films, yeah, Four Weddings and a Funeral, Bridget Jones's Diary, yep, um, you know, and then stuff like Sense and Sensibility are these sort of costume dramas based on uh, literature, yeah, and of course some Shakespeare, although Shakespeare did often took did not take place in England. And then you show and, things like train spotting, you know, Danny Boyle movies. Like, oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. 28, 28, days, 28 later. days later. 28 days yeah. later. One of the great zombie movies. That was the one with Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Oh, no, um, no. Also, no. we talked about James Bond, but let's not forget about uh, Harry Palmer with the Ipcris file. Yeah, Ipcris file, you know, yes. I, I wouldn't do Funeral Harry in Berlin Palmer because in the obviously thing. it takes place more in Berlin than in London. But Ipcris file is mostly England. Mostly. Um, I'll tell you what movie I would not pick, uh, the Big Sleep remake with Robert Mitchum, which <laughs> unfathomably takes place in London as opposed to L.A. It's ridiculous, and I hate it. As much as I love the so don't mention Bogart, it. I hate the <laughs> Robert Mitchum version. I would not <laughs> pick London, is fa- London Has Fallen because <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> well, there's what about like Beat the- Girl, Steve? Beat Girl? You ever see Beat Girl? No. In the 60s, John Barry score? No. Oh, yeah. It's I don't the, know it. It's kind of one of the influences on Austin Powers. I was going to say, Austin, Austin Powers, Powers, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. How dare the you first fuck Austin before Powers. me? I don't know, baby. Was it your turn? The first Austin Powers does not get the, the, the respect that it deserves. Correct. Because that is a great comedy that stays. Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. The sequels are dopey, but the first one is great. They're dopey, but fun. But the first yeah, one is exactly. great. Uh, what about the Cornetto trilogy? Shaun of the Dead. Hot I Fuzz. almost picked At World's End. At world, yeah, World's End, yeah. Really? Yep. yep. Because it was like, oh, yeah, you don't even think about that. And I thought, well, I can't do Shaun of the Dead because it's too obvious. And um, Hot Fuzz, also kind of too obvious. The one you think of least is World's End. But so. I was really impressed with Last Night in Soho. 
Is oh my god, like, I loved that movie, dude. That was I so great. I thought that was really well done. Yep. And she's it really great. great. That, that Last night in Joy. Soho, make a Anna Taylor Joy. man humble. Yeah. Anna Taylor Joy. I can't wait. Edgar for Wright making a uh, Giala. It was uh, or Giala. It was uh, it was excellent. Yeah, really good. Really good. So we. I was always a fan stuff. of uh, Twenty Four Hour Party People about the oh, Manchester music scene. We've picked that before, but it's a great movie. Yeah, Billy Elliot. And now we're oh, going to do so sliding so doors Monty. where we pick the whole week again. Oh. <laughs> but it could have been. No. Well, Let's there's you know, the, the the big Hollywood uh, musical productions like Mary Poppins and My Fair Lady. Sure. Mm-hmm. Although I think those were probably filmed uh, on a soundstage in L.A., right? Or, but you know it wasn't. Uh, they were. That's but correct. you know it wasn't. A Hard Day's Night. Yes. Mm. The Beatles' first but, yes. movie. Um, Sgt. Yeah. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oh, wait. Well, no. The less said about that, the better. <laughs> um, um, you know what else it, was set in England that would have been what? way out of the box? And was also on my list for Wednesday, but it was not quite freaky enough. What? Army of Darkness. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, Antonioni's Blow Up was something else uh, I thought Steve might pick. That was considered. Um, Ad uh, hiding. Wait, did that take place? In- is it, uh, then there's all the, the Sherlock Holmes movies, like young Sherlock Holmes, uh, and then, you know, Sherlock or, you know, Shirley, those other Sherlock movies. I don't think any uh, true no shit, Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes fan would mention young Sherlock Holmes, although I <laughs> love that movie. Uh, yeah, I, think I, don't consider, do. I don't consider myself a Sherlock Holmes fan. Right. Per se, like um, I don't think I, Nick Meyer would not select that movie. <laughs> Nick Meyer would not pick that movie, but he'd go with Basil Rathbone. You know, so. Rathbone? Rath- Rathbone? He's Jewish now. Rathbone. Basil Rathbone. Uh, hey, Rath- Basil Rathbone. Rathbone. I'm having the Manischewitz. Uh, oh Basil my Rathbone. Hey. The London Rathbone. Basil Rathbone. Hazel what? Yes. Hazel Rathbone. What? Hazel uh, Rathbone. Yeah, of course. There, you know, does it Dracula count? Because even though they all start Romania, yes. eventually he makes his way to Hal- what Abbey? Mm-hmm. What's the Abbey? Halifax Abbey or something? Well, yeah, one hundred percent Dracula should count, even though it begins in Transylvania and ends there, because the entire movie is about Dracula saying, "You know what? I think I'm going to conquer fucking England." It's basically just a movie about a real estate deal for guns. It is a real it estate deal bad. gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, and man, yeah. he gets a lot of square footage for it for what he's willing to pay. It really, it's... it's and he brings his own dirt. Do you think they sprayed the castle with a set of cookies before he took a look at it? And I guess... <laughs> cookies? They sprayed with a set cookies, of cookies. Yeah, to make you want to... Oh, I'll take it. Oh, my God. Take it. Wow. But how do you get a mortgage anyway, Dracula? <laughs> he, had, uh, he had a lot of... Uh, Collateral? Yes. Yes. Collateral damage. I just want to mention a movie that I saw last year for the first time that I, I don't think it's a good pick for Friday, but I, I thought it was really terrific. It was a Ken Loach film from 1969 called Kess about a boy who uh, raises a falcon in uh, in uh, the countryside. A falcon? English, but it's just yeah. this really sort of uh, melancholy, elegiac movie about this, you know, this kid out in the countryside. And I bet the bird dies and it's super fucking depressing. I've had, I've it had is, it is I have to say, yeah. Steve, that that's, that's one of the most Steve picks I've ever heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> Very Steve. We award you no points. Okay. So <laughs> I think, so Darren said it should be a big movie. I think it should be something iconic, you know, yeah. like, uh, like, like a, um, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, you know, obviously there's a lot of England going on, but it's mostly in Arabia, go figure. But American World from London is probably not big enough, even though it has London in the title. <laughs> right. Um, That's right. And you know, um, I don't know. Anyone want to like really like say this should be Friday? I, I'll agitate for Excalibur because I think it. First of all, it's a terrific film. Um, it couldn't possibly be more British in its pedigree, um, and it is about England. It is, you know, about, you know, everything. It's, like a, it's, a, it's a founding mythology for England. Sure. Exactly. And Look, it's I'm just totally, extraordinarily well done. I would love to go with Excalibur. I'm going to throw I'm going to throw one out there because Darren talked about how he liked this movie. I'm just going to throw a curve. Christopher Robin. I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, it it's a great movie. Shit. I wouldn't pick it for Friday, though. Yeah, okay. I know. Because I didn't want to go, I, you know, with Paddington. But uh, 
Although some I'm would say you Hook. really should go with Patty. Let's no, go with no Excalibur. one should go with Paddington. We, we love Excalibur. We it, love it, Excalibur. Like you said, it's so England. La Morte de Arthur. What is more English <laughs> than the, the, the Arthurian legends? So yeah. uh, that or Mary Terrible Bob. sausage. Big with Morte. Yeah. And okay, at least it's, it, got, it gets us into the 80s. Barely. That's right. That's true. <laughs> the 1680s? <laughs> what? Um... Okay, well, um, are we are we agreed? Is it going to be Excalibur? Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. who can recite the charm of making? I I can. Go go for it. Anal nathrach uthfas bethut dochiel tienve. Hey, no. anything <laughs> bad happen out there? <laughs> uh, no, I think that cements it. I think we've made our our week. I think we uh, we have a charmed week. Well, at least I can I can have uh, Rob Burnett be proud of me. A wizard's ancient spell. Into the eyes of the dragon and the despair. And the lust of a lord. I must have her. One night with her. Give birth to an empire. Behold the sword of power. Excalibur. Has taken root in the present. It is done. One Lord! One King! Orion Pictures presents John Borman's Excalibur. Knights of the Round Table, we shall always come together in a circle to hear and tell of deeds good and great. And I will marry! Don't you know me, Merlin? Because I'm a creature like you. Their magic is Merlin. Are you just a dream? To sell. A nightmare to others! Their king is Arthur. You're my husband. I must be king first. Their power is Excalibur. I swear eternal faith to our king. Sir Lancelot, you will be my champion. Which is that? Greatest quality of knighthood. True. We're high evil then. <laughs> Where you never expected. I protest my innocence. Were I not king, I would make you pay with your life. A world of wizards, kings, warriors, queens, swords, sorcery, and desire. Forged of splendor and magic. Where future meets past, flesh meets steel, and the only fear is the pain of love. Excalibur, sword of power, sword of kings. That's right. <laughs> Those were his wedding vows. Remember well, that? On and the, we see on where the, that went. On the orb of love, when they all oh, put God. their hands on the orb of love and they recited the charm of making. It's pretty awesome. Come on. Yes. For, from our perspective, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, Steve, Monday, what are we watching? Monday, it's Michael Caine in Mike Orge's Get Carter. On Tuesday, Darren Dockerman. We have Monty Pythons and the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, Ashley Edward Miller. On Wednesday, E Plan 9 of the world's most horribly ingenious murders. He is the abominable Dr. Fibes. On Thursday, it's Ian Fleming's James Bond in an Albert R. Broccoli production of Skyfall. Skyfall! <laughs> and on Friday. And on Friday. Right, one land, he? one king. The king is the land, the land is the king, and all that crap. The king and I, and one more person. <laughs> the Dang, king and Guinevere and Lancelot. Three men and a baby. Where all it's things that. meet their opposites. That, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> let's all do one like great line. There. Great lines from, um, uh, uh, from Excalibur. Yes. Take on yeah. the shape of the duke. I don't know. Wait, wait, let's see. <laughs> Duke? Come on. Nicole Williamson had such great lines. He yeah. did. 
A nightmare to some. No, a a dream to some. Some, A A nightmare nightmare to others. others. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Nicole Williamson's so great in that. And so many familiar faces. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Liam Neeson. And um, by the way, the best story I heard about that film is that uh, that crazy ass like medical med- medical medical yarmulke that like that uh that merlin is wearing nicholas yeah, is wearing yeah. apparently saved his life <laughs> yes. because yeah. when they were shooting the movie a light fell and hit him on the yarmulke <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and apparently he was the biggest prick in the world nicole Williams. totally yeah 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 how but do you get into a fight with helen mirren what the hell I, so, I know right he's so great how do you he's get so that title in a movie with patrick stewart <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh, wow. Meow, Darren. Darren. Darren is not making it so. Um, <laughs> okay, well, there you go. What a great what a great week. What a great week. Fun. Those Brits, they know what they're doing. They do. Yeah. Love it. We're going to send over some Irish spring, and uh, it's going to be. Manly, yes, but I like it too. <laughs> I have some bangers and mash. I always had a thing for her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll use Irish oh. Spring because of you, honey. Right. Oh, my God. Irish <laughs> Two deodorants. Is, Two deodorants. Talking about the, the Irish Spring commercial. Yeah. Oh, God, it was yeah. 12. What did I know? Do they still have that soap? I, mean, I, I haven't seen it in ages. No, I probably think it went out of business. That's too bad. What a shame. We should bring it back. The Irish Spring. Maybe like our production company. <laughs> Irish, Spring, <laughs> Irish Spring Productions, like Braniff. Like part was, of that, uh, was that strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? No. That's no. secret. That's secret. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that still it's around? magically is that like, delicious. Is that like no, that's secret not is not magically delicious. <laughs> <laughs> they are you stole my lucky charm. <laughs> 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 Oh, my God. Okay. So on that note, we're going to be back next week with an all-new episode. If you want to share your thoughts about which Muppets we all are or um, <laughs> any, any picks for Anarchy in the UK Week, you can do so on our Discord server. Check us out in the show notes or on social at all your favorite social channels at 430 Movie Podcast. And, of course, check out our other great podcasts in the Transfers Podcast Network, or you can subscribe to Deck 78, our subscriber-only podcast at the 430 movie feed on Apple Podcasts or at TrexpertsPlus.com. And every other week, there's some great content coming from the Deck 78 Dexters. You're looking at them right here. The Dexters. The Dexperts? The Dexters. The, Dexperts. the Deckheads. Wait, no. That's not to be confused not right. with Dexter Fletcher, who also directed right. The Rachel Papers, which was set in England. Dan Schweiger's favorite movie. Hey, man, you ever see that with the Hounie Sky? Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so on that note... <laughs> Ashley just fell out of a chair. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, we're going to get out of here, but we're going to see you next week for an all-new episode of the 4-3 movie. But until then, Eyewitness News starts now. The Inglorious Live Tour continues as the Trexperts make their way across this fine country of ours to all kinds of great convention goodness. You can see us next in Trek Conderoga as we join Jonathan Frakes, Brent Spiner, and Clint Howard for some Tranya at the Star Trek tour. Darren? It's, uh, it's going to be amazing, uh, particularly because it's going to be the first time that Mark Altman visits the Star Trek original series set tour. And I'm going to be there to watch every minute of it. And me Can't too. Wait. Not a hologram, not an imaginary story. But real, live, you can touch me. But only if you Easy. pay extra. Don't touch I, me. Don't touch me. Don't look and at don't me. don't try and I, steal his coffee. I can't. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, and, of course, Memorial Day weekend will be in Oklahoma City for the inaugural Oklahoma City show from GalaxyCon uh, in July. Uh, we'll, in Ashley July. And I, in July, Ashley and I will be at San Diego Comic-Con. Well, Darren, tell the folks where you'll be. I will be in Raleigh, North Carolina. And... Uh, I'm going to uh, debut a, a little uh, something about Star Trek, the motion picture. I would go, but I can't pronounce it. 
Right. And then, um, and then of course in uh, September, September and August, September. we're going to find our way to San Jose as we're reunited and it feels so good for the inaugural San Jose Galaxy Con. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing a lot of you up there. It's going to be a really fun one. That's and exciting. Bring, is that the right word? It is exciting. exciting. It's exactly. It'll be the only time it takes you guys less time to get to a convention than it does me. That's true. A, we can I'm walk there the time it takes you to get there. Yeah. And this this fall, Ashley and I will be doing Nightmare Weekend back in Richmond. Uh, I know what restaurants we won't be going to. And we bring it on all home at Columbus, Ohio at GalaxyCon. So for more information, go to GalaxyCon.com, ComicCon.org, and, and Star Trek Trek Tour. Tour. Dot com. And you can see us at one or all of these amazing conventions. And uh, we can't wait to see you there. Always great to see our listeners uh, join the expedition. So um, until then, keep on trekking ingloriously, of course, all the way to GalaxyCon, Star Trek Tour, and Comic-Con. Hey, Darren, is this rumor going around that you've got a new podcast? Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it's sort of, it's Trexperts adjacent. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fun thing, uh, you know. We what is know. it? We all, it's called the Weirded Beardos. Yeah. And before you react, uh, it's, uh, it's Kirk Thatcher, our uh, favorite punk on the bus and myself just talking about stuff, talking but about I hate our, him. You don't hate him. No, I'm kidding. I'm doing a oh. song from Star Trek four. I oh, hate you. Right, 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 right. I hate I you. Hate I berate you. you. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But I don't yes, berate yes. him and I don't hate him. And if he's no. involved with you, then I love you. Well, thanks. Um, and, you know, it's, it's basically just us talking about sort of uh, all things related to our history years? of working in the industry. You know, oh. together we have like 78 years of experience working in the in the uh, entertainment biz. I'm going to have to uh, listen to that. I thought it was about maintaining your beards or something. It has nothing to do with beards, actually, which is uh, kind of funny. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's fun. We just, we basically hang out for an hour every other week. So, uh, come and join us. Look for, uh, uh, the Weirded Beardos on Spotify. If you just want to hear the audio and, uh, we're actually on YouTube as well. The Weirded Beardos. Great. Can't wait to check it out. Thanks. First, uh, start of the right and straight on till morning. <laughs>